Hello, my name is Dave Whitesley, and uh, this uh, half hour video will run through uh, Autodesk Alias Design. Um, in this uh, video, I'll be showing you how to surface model using Alias Design um, using a, an example of a shampoo bottle. In Product Design Suite Ultimate, uh, you have the Alias software. We're finding that um, many people are installing uh, Product Design Suite Ultimate, but not necessarily in Alias. Um, so the idea of this video is to show you what uh, Alias's capability is, and then hopefully change your mind into uh, um, installing the Alias software in a future in a future date. So let's launch the software. You do get some uh, skill movies when you start up. These will enable you to uh, get started quickly with the Alias software. I'm just going to close this down and open up a, a model which has just got some wires in it that I'm going to use to uh, surface model. I've got a shelf at the bottom here. Now the idea of Alias is that you get a, a palette on the, on the left hand side here that, that contains all the commands that you require. Um, your favorite commands can be added to a shelf at the bottom here. This, these can all can be moved around afterwards. Um, I've got this uh, um, set up so that it auto hides. And um, this enables me to get the maximum uh, graphics screen available, but also the common commands that I use are available to me in this shelf. First thing I'm going to do is uh, add a square surface to my uh, rails I've already got on this model. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, continuity to the four rails and it's important to note that I'm assuming that the ZX axis is the symmetry axis and all surfaces need to be coming off for that um, plane um, tangent. So what I'm going to do here is set um, out of the continuity options I have an implied tangency option for the rails that uh, are on the um, symmetry plane so that the surfaces when they're added to these rails um, come out uh, tangent um, to the uh, or perpendicular in, the, in this case to the symmetry plane but when we actually mirror the surfaces we don't get any seam marks in our surface model because the surfaces will be tangent to each other. The other two I can leave free or G0 continuity I'll explain about that later and we'll go ahead and we'll choose the wires and as you can see, as I choose these wires, it actually shows on here what, what's going to happen to the surface as it's connected up to these wires. This will create the surface. Let's just shade it. And we'll go ahead and add the um, surfaces to the neck of the bottle. I use a skin surface here, like a, a ruled surface, if you like, uh, to um, add a surface between those two rails. Now, at the top here, I'm going to add a blend surface. Now the blend surface gives me the option of different types of continuity. Now if I choose G0 continuity in, uh, uh, in the first instance and select the edges of the surfaces here, what will happen is the surfaces will have no effect on this particular sur blend surface that I'm creating and we get G0 continuity. If I want these to be tangent, then I use G1 and this will make the surface tangent to the surfaces on either side. And I can adjust the weight of this tangency by adjusting the slider here to adjust the weight of the tangency on the surface that's been created. If I want uh, a higher degree of tangency of continuity between the two surfaces, then I would choose G2. The G2 curvature not only makes the surfaces tangent to each other, but as where they meet, the radius of curvature of the two surfaces is the same as well. And this minimizes sink, uh, seam lines and if I just put um, the zebra stripes on, then we can check the continuity between these surfaces by uh, noting that the zebra stripes are continuous or contiguous as they move from one surface to another. Now, I don't want my surface to be like this. I actually want it to be G0, continu uh, G G G0 continuity at the top here on the neck. So I can go to the history of my uh, alias and click on the freeform blend here and I can adjust the continuity such that I get G1 at the bottom here 
for G0 at the top. So in this instance, we'll have a, um, a, 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 a angle here, if you like, and then I can fill it this in afterwards. So we do have the ability to go back to the history of the model and change it, should we wish. Let's just go and add a planar surface at the bottom here. This window over the geometry, click on go. That gives us a planar surface. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to add some uh, finger grip marks or finger grip, uh, a finger grip surface to this bottle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to detach the surface where one of the U or V rails, um, this, this particular rail down here, I want to detach the surface, use this rail to break it into two in effect. So we'll run the command and just select this rail, click on go. That then gives us two surfaces. So if I select this one, which hasn't been shaded yet and delete it, then we have um, a gap. If I put on my grip curves, I can then use this to create a surface. I'm going to use um, a bi rail surface. And with a bi rail surface, I can actually use uh, de determine how many generation curves and rail curves I use, and these can be adjusted by these radio buttons here. Now, with the con continuity, the two generation curves, one is going to be G0 and G1. I'll explain that as we go through. One will be one rail will be implied tangent and another rail will be tangent. So what's going to happen here is the G0 continuity one is the free one down the bottom here. The G1 tangent one is the edge of the surface here. So the surface I create is actually tangent to this one. Rail number one is this curve here, which is implied tangent because it's up against the symmetry plane. And rail number two is uh, going to be tangent to the surface. So this is G1 tangent and select the edge and add my surface. OK, next we're going to add an indentation or an offset surface, if you like, for a label. So we'll just uh, put on our label curves and I'm going to use this to uh, cut by projecting one of these curves onto this surface in a particular direction, the Y direction in this case, uh, to cut out part of the surface. So we're going to use a trim command. I've set it to 3D trimming and I've set it to trim in the Y direction. So it's going to project these curves or the curve onto the surface in the Y direction, which is this green axis here. So we'll go ahead and select the surface, the curve, the position, uh, a position on the surface, and I'm going to tell it to discard this section or this segment. And this, this then cuts out that segment as it projects the curve onto the surface. We'll then turn off the uh, model, the bottle layer, just to get the uh, label curves layer. And from here, we can then use some extra curves to create another skin surface and then project the inner curve and keep this segment such that we now have two a, a gap which we're going to fill in in a minute and an offset surface so I'm just going to select this surface and put it onto the correct layer and we now have the surfaces ready to um, blend and also this is where the label is going to be attached on this bottle so uh, it's starting to become more like a bottle that you would have seen on the uh, shelves of a supermarket okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to add uh, a spline to the ends of these edges here we're going to snap to the end points and then we're going to use tangency to actually make the curve tangent to one of the edges. All right. So what's going to happen here is this surface is going to be G1 continuous uh, and tangent to this surface, but G0 to the one at the top because there's going to be a seam. Likewise, at the bottom here, we do exactly the same thing. Create curve a, a spline by attaching and snapping to the edges of the surface I'm using the control and all keys at the same time to do this and then we're going to use the align command to align the surface tangent to the edge 
Now we've got this, we use the by rail surface again. Again, two by two. Uh, in this case, generation curves one and two will be implied tangent. These are the two splines I've just added. And again, these are on the symmetry plane. So these need to be made implied tangent. And then one rail is gonna be G zero position and the other one is G one tangent. I'm gonna rebuild the splines on these so that when we create the surface, the splines on the edges will get rebuilt. So we'll select the implied tangent splines, the G zero position edge, which is this one at the top and the G one tangent edge, which is this one at the bottom. And that will now create me my surface on the label or just outside the label area okay so let's add some uh, fillets so we'll go to the surface uh, fillet command select the two surfaces in this case on the one side of the fillet and the surface on the base and we'll give it a radius of about three millimeters and build that surface Click on next to reset the uh, dialog box for the next fillet. And now we'll select the neck, except the other surface next to it, except, um, yep, the center direction is correct. And we'll click on build to build ourselves. Now, if I just move the slider, you can see that it will change. It automatically updates the fillet radius. And last but not least, we'll put a small, uh, between this uh, surface here of the label and the outer surface of the bottle. In this case, we need to check that the, the yellow and the purple arrow here point to the center of the, um, the radius. Uh, um, uh, so by clicking on the arrows, you can actually change the direction of the arrow to point to where the center of the uh, radius is. Click on build and that builds us a fillet which we can shade and there's our final design now again we've got the ability of going back to history this is one of the most powerful things in alias is the fact that even though this is a surface modeler we can still go back and adjust the history of this so if I go to the history button here and choose say the last surface sorry the one for the neck we can actually change the radius and let it update and it remembers um, all the other settings and we were able to adjust the radius or if you click on undo all they'll actually undo that radius that fillet and then we can go back and add something else to it afterwards so you've got the ability of going back in history in time to adjust your um, features that you've created within the surface model we'll just add that surface again so we just go back to the surface fillet When you use an alias, remember these buttons at the bottom right hand corner, they will catch you out. Okay, there's our bottle design. All we need now is to turn on symmetry in the layers, and there's our final design. Um, if you want to put a, a planar surface on the top here, then all you have to do is go to layers, go to symmetry, put create geometry on, that will actually create separate geometry from the mirror. From the original geometry along the symmetry plane and now we can actually go ahead and add our planar surface on the top two curves here and there we are there's our bottle all done in alias design 2013 thank you very much